get started here in a second. You know, I already drink my little quick Herbalife drink every time before we get started. To make sure I have enough energy for you guys, because you usually I don't have enough energy. We'll put that down right there for a second. And we're gonna get rolling. So uh, here we are, episode number six of this weekly broadcast, live broadcast that I'm doing, Steve Says. So basically we've had a crazy week going on. I just landed back from California just a couple hours ago. And I uh, couldn't wait to come back here and share all my experiences with all you, you peak freaks. So peak freaks is working on so many ridiculous things coming up in the future. Near future, distant future, we've got so many things that we're working on. Just making sure the microphone is there. Who's that, welcome back? Yeah, great. I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. You guys are coming in for the 415 class. So uh, PPC is working on so many ridiculous things right now. Coming up in the future, we're going to be taking over. We're, we're basically keep proving it again how we're leading authority and experts as your only choice, not only in, in Rockland County, but anywhere that you're going. We're at the top. We're the only choice for real, where real people can get real results, whether it's weight loss, performance, whatever. Obviously, we're really specializing in weight loss mostly. You know, I'm always, always trying to learn and grow and work on myself and develop my work on self development. I basically I took an overnight flight last night from California back to New York, so it left at like 10 something p.m. and obviously I'm flying overnight. So the guy sitting next to me, he was pissed because obviously I'm not going to fucking sleep. I don't, I'm not going to sleep. I have a time, I have five hours to sit there and just focus and work on something. Uh, there's no way I was going to go to sleep during that flight. So I was awake the entire night, the entire night working just banging it away, smashing away on my computer. Uh, I'm just too fucking excited for the things that I'm working on to bring you guys a better experience here at Peak and improving on the way that, that we're servicing you in every way and con continue to build on our unbreakable Peak Freak culture that, we're, that we created here and ultimately, ultimately leading to your accelerated results and changing your life. So I'm sitting there, the guy next to me was, was fucking pissed on the plane. It's an overnight flight, I took a picture even. You see just darkness in the whole plane and then my computer lit, lit up. This guy next to me, he had like a bag of fucking popcorn or something. He's sitting there. He opens up his tray and he just puts his head inside the bag of his popcorn, his face, I guess, to block out the light from my fucking laptop. And I, I don't really know how to type, so I use two fingers to type. So I, and I smash and I type. I can type quick with two fucking fingers. I just get pumped up, I get worked up, and I'll be typing faster than a fucking stenographer with two fingers. So I'm just smashing away and it's like pop, 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 pop. It sounds like a, a machine gun blasting off. And it's just my fingers smashing, striking the keys. Just coming up with different ideas and working on different things that I worked, that I learned, and things I can improve on from this weekend. Things that I can bring back to you guys, and it just had me too excited. So this, this fucker sitting next to me, he's pissed off. He's 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 probably sleeping all day today because he didn't get a second of sleep on that plane. So I wasn't the only one awake on the plane. Me and him were awake. So because I was just smashing, popping away like a machine gun, fingers hitting the stro stroking the keys on the keyboard. He was pissed. But just because I'm working on so many amazing things for you guys, so it's now official. You know, you might, most of you have known already because it's been on Facebook, put some pictures and some videos. I'll be posting, you know, a lot of more, lot, tons more videos and pictures as we get access to them. I have some, you know, behind the scenes photos and videos of the uh, stage performance that I had. We're going to get some professional quality stuff coming soon within the next week or two, hopefully. So basically we won the award for America's Top Trainer. And, you know, we already know we have the top training studio in Rockland County. That's not even close. Yes, sleep is overrated. Just sleep when you're fucking dead. Who's that? Maureen? Sleep is overrated. Eight hours of sleep you're supposed to get a day, probably good for most people, but if I get four hours, I'm probably sleeping in, whatever. I get up at 3.45 a.m., 4 a.m. every single day, seven days a week, no matter what time I go to sleep. I don't care if I want to sleep at 1.30, I'm getting up at the same time. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make shit happen. I got things to do. Not a lot of time to do it. We all have the same amount of hours a day, like we said last week, right? So you already know we're we're the top training center in Rockland County. We just keep proving it, we're just gonna keep going above and beyond, keep over delivering to you guys. And we're just going to continue taking over. We're going to take over Rockland County. We're going to take over all, all the areas. You know, we're going to take over the fucking world. We got to ready, get ready for that invasion. So we're just going to keep growing. And you know, we're we're up there in the in the country with some of the you know top badass gym owners. I know I know a lot of the top gym owners around the country. You know, so we are right up there with them. So there's a lot of awesome gyms out in California. Some good friends of mine that I that I know and and scattered all around the country. We're actually doing the, visiting some touring some of the top gyms in the area, up and down the East Coast, up and down the West Coast, we're gonna be doing some touring of them, kind of see how they do things and learn from them and, and share with them the way we do things. They're gonna, you know, we're, we, that's how we, we do it with the, the team that I've been building out there. So basically, I'm gonna do a quick recap of last week. It was a perfect setting when I, it, the answer was, where the, where the hell has Steve been? So it was a perfect setting last week because since I was gonna be away doing, you know, some work and learning out in California for these awards and stuff, we had a professional photo shoot we did 
in California. Actually, I have another professional photo shoot coming up at a, at a uh, conference in May, so I gotta get in shape for that shit. That's in Las Vegas in May, I have a photo shoot coming up. So, last week, the, one of the big topics was, you know, where the hell has Steve been? It was discussing, you know, what, how, why haven't I been training and, and explaining how the experience, even though I'm not here, the less I'm here, the more I'm really here because we are leading and guiding and, and everyone in here that's training is on the same page. We're all working together. We're learning together. So if you're training with one of us, you're training with all of us. Obviously, we all have our own different personalities. Everyone's not as ugly and as bald and as hairy as me, but that's fine. You get the same experience. You're not here to hang out with me. You're here to get an ass-kicking workout and get in shape, get your results, lose weight, and that's what happens to you no matter who's training in the session. We're going to go deep, deeper into our trainers here in a second and the process that we use with our trainers. And it's going to be some awesome stuff. You know, show, give you a little more looking behind the scenes and how we do things and, and how the, we operate with our trainers and what makes our trainers so fucking awesome. That's what we're going to go over here in a little bit. So we also went over last week, we discovered, we went over the question about what's the number one thing holding you back to reaching your fitness goals. I'm trying to read your guys' comments as we go. It's obviously small on the, on the phone, but I'm trying to do it as I go because I always miss them a lot. So I'll try to stop here and there, take a look down there, see what you guys are talking, probably talking shit about me, saying you're not coming in today because I'm back. You're going to stay away from the gym for a couple days till I disappear again, till I get shit back out or arrested or some shit. Yes, I got fucked with that at the airport again. Every time I go through, doesn't fail, they look through my shit and they always find a, they always find a reason, something to take away out of my backpack. I posted the picture last night. And they always take something. They always steal some of my shit out of my backpack. Whatever it is, they'll find a reason to take it. But this time, they didn't even take anything. They always harass me at the airport and take something at least. They try to pretend, you know, to justify them fucking with me. But this week, this time, they didn't even take anything. They looked through all my stuff. They started testing it, swabbing the thing for, I don't know what, dog shit or something. But whatever. All right, moving on. So we talked about the what was holding people back last week from reaching their goals, and that was the three things that we know, time, money, and motivation. And we discovered those all three were basically the same excuse. And your life and your results and getting yourself in shape and changing your life. What is that? Looking for your abs. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, so we discovered all three of those are the same excuse. They all have the same answer. It's just owning your life and taking responsibility for your life and determining your own priorities. That's what it is. So when you're talking about time or money or motivation, those are all the same thing. They're all the same excuse. They're all the same answer. We went really into deep detail last week, so we're not going to go over that pretty much anymore. But there were, there were some people on when I put that question on Facebook a couple weeks ago leading up to that post or leading up to that Facebook live when I said what is the number one thing holding you back and reaching your, your fitness goals or progressing or whatever there's you know some people probably put in there nothing they just put nothing dot 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 you know what nothing like anyone who put a nothing nothing is holding them back and nothing is holding them back into reaching their health and fitness goals you're probably just a fucking narcissistic douchebag like fuck you like we, we all have vulnerability we all have things we can improve upon you're not fucking Jesus Christ or some shit or Clark fucking Kent. You're probably just an asshole and you're probably the one that needs the most self-development and most improvement upon things. If someone's asking you, where, where can you improve on in your life? What can you improve on? What's holding you back? And your answer is just nothing. Pretty good chance you're just a fucking asshole. That's what that is. Because there's no one that can't improve. If you're where you are and you think you're just, you're just there and you're just the shit, then you're probably one of those people that need the most help and need the most things you need improve on in your life. I you need to improve on your attitude. That's just some shit. Um, is this thing going slow? It keeps freezing up. Whatever. I think there's no Wi-Fi on. Anyway. So, we'll still accept you in here. Those people that say they have nothing to improve upon. Because I guarantee you have a lot to improve upon. And we can fucking help you improve upon that stuff. So, don't think we'll turn you away. That's what we're all about. Is those people who are fucked up in the head. Probably like you. Those people that are saying, oh, I don't need to prove anything. I'm just the shit. I'm Jesus. You know, we'll, we'll still accept you here. That's what we're all about here is accepting those people who feel like, you know, they probably know where to turn. They're probably all mentally fucking twisted in their head. And we'll still help you out here. We'll still help you get some results here. We'll still take you in. That's what we're all about. Like I said, that's exactly wh where I came from. That's how I feel everywhere I go is not being accepted or not fitting in. So that's what we culturally created here. So all you douchebags out there, come on here and we'll make you not douchebags anymore. Let's move on. What else was going on? So... Uh, if your goal is to stay the same, anyway, if your goal is to stay the same and you aren't always progressing, like every day, I try to make myself better than I was the day before. I try to make myself a version of me that will whoop my own ass from the day before. And that means I'm improving and I'm getting better. So if that's not your goal and you this are there, then you're probably, if you're staying still, you're going fucking backwards. If you're not improving, you're going fucking backwards. You know, 
God knows I have tons of areas I can improve in. Tons. You could, we could sit here for probably 10 hours just going over what I can improve upon on myself and my self-development. And even physically. Physically, mentally, everything. You know what I mean? You, everyone can improve on stuff. So just to say nothing, you're an asshole. But we can help you out with that. We'll, 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 help, we'll help you figure out what you need to work on. Because I guarantee there's plenty that you need to work on. So that actually sounds like a good topic for next week. Like what is your... What is, what is like your vulnerability, what is your, what do you need to improve upon? You know what I mean? We can probably work on that next week. I'll share that with you guys next week. So send a text, an email, like what are you struggling with? Not just, you know, money, like last week were the excuses, money and time and schedule. That's bullshit excuses. We just, you know, demyth all that crap. So what's really like your big struggle? This is like a, that's a perfect thing for us to go talk about next week. I can go deep into what my struggles are, what holds me back in fitness and in life and in business and everything. So Send in your text, your emails, your Facebook messages. By the way, you should be going to liking that page. If you don't like our business page right now, you need to like our business page because I think eventually we're going to have to start putting these Facebook Lives on our business page because our friends on our personal page are already capped out at, at the 5,000 limit. So we're going to need to start doing some more stuff on our business page. So if you don't already like our business page, you need to go like the business page. You might have missed out on some stuff because the personal page is kind of limited what, they, what Facebook lets you do with it. It's already capped out on the friends. So... Next week, I think that's, that's a good idea. You know, Tell me about your struggles in fitness and just life in general and all your fucking vulnerable... You're, you're all vulnerable motherfucking creatures. We all are. Every one of us is. So you can dig deep into that next week. You know, send, send me in with that stuff. We can talk about it. Go over it. So anyway, back to California. We're in California. So I won some uh, Land Rover, but I already have a fucking car. So there's an option. I guess I still have to make that decision. You either you got, have that car or they'll write you a check. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to do because I have a fucking car and I don't need some fancy ass car to walk, go around and just think I'm cool. You know, you can send me a check. I'll take that any second, right? Probably. See what happens. Uh, but I still took all those pictures next to the car because it still was, you know, an honor just to be there. And it was what an honor to be in the presence of, we were over, there was over, I think 1500 of the world's top trainers and gym owners from over I think two dozen countries, like over 24 countries. There were trainers there from China, from Australia, and every fucking where in between. So what a what a fucking humbling honor, you know, just to be able to come out of you know. I use I really prefer to sit in my dark, quiet corner alone in the cold. But when it's time for me to step up and be a leader and take charge and inspire and motivate, you know, when it's time for me to lead, that's the way I'm wired. I'm wired to lead. So when it's time for that, I'll come out of that fucking dark corner. I'll fucking turn green like the Incredible Hulk. Actually, it's kind of green today. I'll fucking turn green like the Incredible Hulk and anything goes. I'll explode into uh, an authentic rage of just a peak freak, Marine Corps type leadership. All right, I'm going to keep going. I don't know. There's some weird connection. It keeps like, But I'll keep going. I think recording will still keep recording. We're in this shitty New York weather from sunny San Diego that we were just in. And now we got this shitty weather here. It keeps losing, losing the connection. But we're going to keep rolling. But, yeah, like I said, I'll come out of the dark corner when it's time for me to step up, charge forward. I'll, I'll charge for the invasion rather than in front of it. I'll, I'll lead my fucking people from the front. I'll charge straight into hell to save the lives and defend the past. And I'll not only help you. But I'll teach you how to fight and fucking conquer what you fear, whatever the fuck it is, whatever your fear is, whatever your invasion is, whatever is holding you back. I will run straight at the devil, just calling, yelling out my battle cry, no excuses, straight in the devil's fucking face. And I get, and you know what? We will emerge victorious over your demons and over your setbacks and 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 the enemy and the invasion. You know, uh, this this was this what we did in in California was a team award. This was not an award for me. This is that's impossible. That's not an award for me. And look who just joined in there. If you guys see, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. Lamar Shelton, if you guys see who just joined in the, in the, watching this live here, Lamar Shelton. So here I am, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to come out of my dark corner in, in California to hop on stage. Fucking Steve Weatherford, the New York Giants, the Super Bowl champion, Steve Weatherford is on stage presenting. I'm going up next after this fucking Super Bowl champion. I don't give a shit because I have like ice cold fucking steel in my veins. So I'm not going to get nervous going on a stage. I don't care if there's, once it's time for me to go, it doesn't matter what's in front of me. I'll fucking conquer it and I'll step up. You know, once I make that breakthrough out of my dark corner, like I was saying. So Steve Weatherford, New York Giants, Super Bowl champion, is on stage doing his thing. And I'm, go I'm ready to go on stage. And in my head, I'm just, my head's a fucking tornado all the time. It just spins 24 hours a day. That's why I didn't go to sleep on the, on the overnight flight coming back. So 
in my head, I'm, you know, I'm going over what I'm going to go talk about. I'm supposed to have like only a couple of minutes, three minutes to talk. Obviously, went over a little bit of that just because I have a lot to say and I'm not a lot of fucking time to say it. So I'm ready to get on stage. I, I'm, have, I'm in my head. I have my notes in my head. You know, a little couple bullet points I want to go over. And a part that I'm talking about is how personal trainers need to be accountable. There's a lot of trainers that I talk to there in California. There was over 1,500 from all over the world. A lot of them out of shape. They're not representing our industry well. So I, on stage, I, after I saw this, I, I figured I'm going to address this. I have the chance to speak to them, chance to lead them, to motivate them, to open their fucking eyes. So I tell this story. I tell them to start you know, getting in shape, looking the part of a trainer, maybe take their own classes from their gym because I see a lot of they, I see Eating those, I told them, bake these bacon cheeseburgers, and the grease was dripping down their chin, landing on their dick do. So someone yells out, someone, or they don't know what a dick do is. So I tell this story. I'm planning to tell the story, so I didn't go on stage yet, right? I'm re- going over this story in my head that I'm going to say on stage. I get an alert on my cell phone, and it's a friend request from Lamar Shelton. He's actually watching us right now. He just popped in. I get a friend request on Facebook from Lamar Shelton. Now, I haven't probably spoken to him in 17, 18 years, right? The story I'm going on stage is quoting this guy from the Marine Corps, Shelton, and, and I haven't spoke to him. No one knows what I'm about to talk about because the shit's in my fucking head. And I get a friend request from him right before I go step on stage. It is the weirdest, freakiest shit in the world. And I'm talking, this is like almost 20 years ago this happened. I'm about to quote, recruit Shelton on the stage, and this motherfucker sends me a friend request right as I'm standing there. Steve Weatherford's on the stage. I'm ready to go up there and tear shit up and fucking blow the, the roof off the place. And I get this fucking friend request from Shelton out of nowhere. It's some crazy, freaky voodoo shit. I don't know what it is. Like some, the what's that, uh, law of attraction thing or something. It's crazy. So here's the story. I'll just say it again really quick. So I'm telling the personal trainers, they need to stop. They need to be a little more accountable before they do. Take a little better care of themselves. Because the grease is dripping down their double cheeseburger onto their dick do. So what's a dick do? So I was telling them a story about in, in boot camp. There was recruit Shelton. He came in there, you know, he's going to get, hoping to get in shape when he gets there. He showed up to boot camp, maybe not in the best shape. The shape was round of his stomach, right? So the drill sergeant goes by and smacks him in his big belly and says, Recruit Shelton, what the fuck is that? Recruit Shelton says, that's my dick do, sir. He says, what the fuck is a dick do? He says, that's when your gut sticks out farther than your dick do. So I'm going on stage about to tell this story about someone I met almost 20 years ago. Right before I get on stage, this fucking guy sends me a friend request. He had no idea I was in California. He had no idea what I was doing because we weren't, even, we weren't even friends on Facebook. And he sent me a friend request right before I'm about to go on stage and quote something he said 20 years ago. That's some weird shit. The most inspiring part of this story is I see the friend request right before I'm going on stage after the New York Giants Super Bowl champion Steve Weatherford. And I look at the picture. I see it's him. And he, his, his Facebook page his profile picture is him in a gym. He's all big and buff. He obviously got rid of the dick dude. That shit set me on fire. Got me so inspired when I got up on stage. I was a super fucking super freak on stage. You saw probably some highlights. I put some high, a quick like one minute little highlight film of a part of the event where I have a couple segments on there you could see. But it was just some crazy shit on there. So that was a crazy story about the dick dude and he's actually in here. He's like, they're, I'm getting messages from trainers from different countries telling me, I will never forget about the dick do because they were trainers from all over the world. They're, I'm, I'm getting messages and friend requests from all the different trainers that were there as when I was doing the uh, performance at the conference, and they're all talking about the dick do, dick do, dick do. Everyone loves the dick do story, and they're referencing it on a daily basis now. So Shelton, you're like a, a fucking cult hero all across the fitness world right now, and it inspires me to see you in a gym and in shape. And if you need anything, need me help you nutrition your training program, let me know. I'm gonna hook you up. I'm gonna take you on. As, I'll take you on as like an online coaching client even. Um, Shelton, and we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you fucking ripped. There he is. Look at that. Dick do is a disease. That is Shelton right there. He's an awesome, awesome guy. One of my old Marine friends living down in Florida. So back to the award. So I'm going on stage after Steve Weatherford, and I go in anything I do, no matter what the odds are against me. I plan to fucking dominate and conquer. So that's in my head. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, win whatever I do. I was against a bunch of awesome dudes. Anyone, anyone that. Won these awards was was capable of winning and you couldn't question it. You know what I mean? So it was just an honor to be able to win that. But it wasn't an award for me. This is an award for for, for our team. This is a team award. This is a victory for all the all the fucking peak freaks out there. Those of you who at one point felt hopeless and thought you would never fit in, just like me when I was you know coming up and, and until I joined the Marine Corps and felt like I, until I finally fit in somewhere. 
This is for those people who felt helpless, like you would never fit in somewhere. For those who felt like you would never achieve any weight loss goals, or maybe even thought you didn't deserve any results. You just felt like it was beyond you. You didn't deserve that shit. So this, this is who the award is for, for you guys, you peak freaks out there who at one point felt hopeless, though you, you against the world. Those, those of you who have never been accepted anywhere or belonged anywhere, you know what? You're fucking accepted here. Even the douchebags that say they have nothing to, nothing to change and nothing to improve upon because they're fucking God and their shit doesn't stink. We would probably, we would even give you a chance here. You probably wouldn't last because you'll just probably still just be an asshole, but you never know. We'll still give you a shot and try to help you out. But, you know, this is a victory for all you peak freak recruits out there. You guys are my recruits. You guys are my fucking army. You guys are there. You guys are the, you guys are the fucking heroes here, right? So, this is also a team award for our peak freak staff, our trainers. The, you got the recruits there as the, as the members, the clients, the new members, the little lower level recruits just learning, coming up. Then we have the staff, the corporals and the sergeants. They're the ones leading the charge, you know, showing the recruits the way, where to go, in the trenches daily. They're fucking fighting hand to hand fucking combat against the enemy, overcoming adversity and obstacles on a daily basis, motivating and helping you peak, you freak recruits. In every training session, they're bringing, they're bringing the motherfucking fire every second of every second. So the staff, you guys are the heroes. You guys are the stars. You guys are the fucking gems in here. You, you're the ones that, you know, part of the, this is, like I said, this is a team award. So this is your victory. This is, you know, this is your victory in the battle in, against the invasion of fat and unhealthy lifestyles that we combat on a daily basis. That's what this is a victory for. That's what this is an award for. We're just the next one, another battle in the evasion. That's what it is. Every day is another battle in the evasion. We're going to keep winning and keep conquering and keep dominating. So you guys on the staff, our team here, all the trainers here, you guys are the fucking rock stars. And, and we appreciate the passion you guys bring to Peak. And so, you, you know, I come back from California with this victory, voted as um, America's top trainer. And we are the top, the top studio in the area. So every, all, everyone on the staff, I'm coming back. That's why I don't want the car. You're all going to get a $500 bonus to every single one of you just for us being not, you know, even just for us winning these awards. So we appreciate everything you guys do. This, this is your award, your victory. So we want to thank you guys and we appreciate every one of you. Who's in there? Love Peak Freak Trainers. Yes. So there's one of them now coming in. One of the freaks. Oh, and he needs to get his door open. Hey. And another freak. You might want to hold your ears. So, we're gonna go on. There's a couple people just walking in, but they're just gonna have to deal with this. What time is it? We got a class coming up in a half hour. Wow, you're here for a half hour earlier for your class? Of course. You either got nothing to do, you're a loser, or it's just fucking awesome here. Which one is it? Not for me or her. I don't know, both of you. I'm a loser. Huh? I love this place. Yes. I can't hear you. Come here. I love you. Because we love pink fatigue! Look at that, she's here a half hour early. I love this place. <laughs> you gotta say I love this place. You gotta say with a little more enthusiasm. I love this place! There you go, look at that. <laughs> we love this place! Whoa! There, that's what I'm talking about. Now you wonder why I'm calling fucking freaking fuck freak here. I'm the only normal one here. I'm the only one like that's calm and normal and not a fucking weirdo. But whatever. So we're, we're going in, and speaking of the trainers, so we just talked about that. The how, you know, you, it's, a, it's a whole team. Award, a team victory that we have here. So what, what makes our trainers so different and amazing and fucking awesome other than any other trainers out there in any other gym anywhere across Rockland County for sure. Rockland County's not even there. That's like light years beyond that. There's nothing even close in the fucking area, not even the close vicinity of us in Rockland County. You know, but all across the country, there's only a few that could even come close to, you know, matching us. And that's all these, you know, close friends of mine that I, I meet out there in California when we all get together for these different conferences. So what makes them so, so fucking awesome? We have, we have such a unique approach with mo you know, most of the trainers we bring on board here. Generally, we hire our trainers from within, for the most part. Our rock star, kick-ass members who are in our groups, who are the leaders and the veterans of our training program, those are the members who have experienced our program over a certain amount of time, for you know, a certain amount of months and even years. What are we saying in here? What? What are you saying? I don't smile, I'm squinting, it's bright in here. I, don't, I, I lack the facial musculature to smile. Got to go pick up the kids. Look at that. Something's going there to go take, take care of his kids. Taking care of his, his business. Nice. We're going we're gonna to talk to you soon, Shelton. We're going we're gonna to hook you up. We're going to set up some online training stuff. He's already got really addicted. We're going to get that guy ripped. We're going to get him shredded. That's going to be our project. That's going to be our, our cross-country project. He's down in Florida. We're going to follow his progress as we go. We're going to start training. Whole freaking internet. That's what we're going to do. 
just for that awesome story that's now impacted so many thousands and thousands of people. And now they're spreading the Dick Do story to thousands of people. So back to our trainers. So we're always, you know, s- looking and scouting throughout our members. You know, the members who have experienced the program over months and years, like I was saying, but they have a deep understanding and connection with our core values and our mission and our purpose. You know, th- these are the crazy peak freaks who are leading by example in the group training sessions. They're already helping out new members that new members come in. They're coming, they'll go and they'll, they'll start signing, helping them sign in. You know, when, they, when it's crowded, they'll start helping getting people in there, welcoming them, motivating them. They're demonstrating exercises, you know, helping to lead the, the workouts. They're the ones that, are, that have naturally evolved into almost like an assistant trainer status when, they, when they're here fucking paying us. So those are the type, kind of people that we evolve into a trainer. We're going to go into the process how it goes. It's, it's not as, just as easy as, oh, you work out pretty good here. You want to be a trainer? Fuck no. A lot more goes into it. You got to earn that shit to be, to be a trainer here. So if, if a trainer wasn't already a member here that has evolved from like a, a peak into a peak leader as a member and, they, and they're maybe, you know, coming here for a job, we'll require them to be an actual member for a certain amount of time. They have to be a member for a certain amount of time because they need to experience the training sessions, the intensity, but most and more important, the interaction and the culture that we have here, as well as relationships between the trainers, the owners, the members, they need to experience that firsthand on the other side of the glass. So... Will not accept someone off the off the fucking street with their fancy ass little certifications and awards and college credits and degrees and I don't give a shit about that. That's all bullshit. You know, obviously I've been certified as a, as a trainer for like twenty something years, but you know how many times I've showed all I've, I've like whatever amount of certifications, tons of them, and all kinds of different continuing education courses. You know how many times I've showed those or even told anyone about them? Zero. And you know what? If I did tell someone, oh, I have a certification from this organization, the ACDC, or some bullshit. Well, is that a rock group? See, exactly. You wouldn't even know the difference with a certification is because it's a piece of paper that anyone could just go online for the most part and get. So sure, all that's impressive on paper and, you know, to those not in the know, but I'm not one of those people not in the know, but to those not in the know, those things, those things don't mean shit to me, to tell you the truth. So after someone's a member, they have, we have a, they have to become a member for a certain amount of time if they wanted to be a trainer here. We have an in-house intern, intern uh, ship program that's so in-depth and so detailed and requires so many hours and so much focus and studying and learning. It's ridiculous. It's, you're going to learn more in a short amount of time than a, in a freaking college degree with, of training and all that bullshit you're learning on paper that is not even usable in the real world. So we have a, And then after the internship, that's followed by a very detailed and lengthy P-Physique trainer uh, certification course. And this is real world useful, effective, and practical programs that, that ensure they're able to operate to up to our peak standards. And I guarantee the process that I've created can rival any fucking paper certification out there that doesn't transfer into shit in the real world, doesn't transfer into shit on the weight room floor or the gym floor or the boot camp floor, and doesn't translate into results and changing lives and building a culture and giving an experience like we give over here. Those pieces of paper mean nothing to me. I'll wipe my ass with it. I just said it out loud. I thought it, but I shouldn't have said it. Whatever. Fuck it. Anyway, I used about five, when I got certified, all these I have lists and lists of certifications. They're on the wall. I have all these different things. I used about five percent of what I had stu- had to study years for all these certifications, years and years and over the decades, whatever. I've, I maybe still use actually use in real life and apply five percent of what was in those certifications, and that that might even be you know on the survey. It might even be less than that. Who knows of what it took to like pass my original certification in, in I think nineteen ninety nine. Yes, 19 fucking 99. So I'm an old fuck. So what? So I feel, but I feel like I'm 23 and I probably act like I'm 13, but I don't really give a shit. So anyway, one, once, or I should say, if a trainer is able to, you know, survive that first, become a member, you have to survive the training classes as a member in the trenches. Then you have to survive an internship program. Then you have to survive our certification. So then we'll bring them on board as almost like a Lance Corbin position in the Marine Corps. So that's, you know, then you're going to need to prove that you're a good fit and you're a true believer in the peak freak culture that we create here and in line with our core values because we live and die by those core values that we went over a few weeks ago. That's what we operate. Everything we do on every decision we make is according to that, to our core values and our mission and purpose. Is it in line with our core values? That's how we decide everything we do here. So once I make it to that point, I don't even need to, I don't even have the need or require it, you know, because our, our fucking sessions are the fucking best thing around. Nothing comes even close to our training sessions in the area, like I was saying. So I don't even have to like tell the trainers, oh, and you know, to, you know, ongoing, I need you to take this amount of training sessions. Over. We don't even need to do that. You know why? Because it's fucking awesome already. And they're taking the sessions all the time. Of course they're taking the sessions. You know, it's no shock to me that, you know, I was able to bring home this, the, the you know, win that award out there in California. But, you know, we make fucking magic happen here. That's why. So 
I want, I needed, I was going to a photo shoot for that award. So I was doing a professional photo shoot out in California. I needed to get in the best shape of my life. So you know what I did? I just started taking more classes at Peak Physique. Yeah. And if you see the pictures, I posted some pictures of the photo shoot. I got in fairly decent shape. So that just shows that the one thing that really changed to get me into the best shape of my life was taking more classes here at our gym. You know, I usually would just go do my own thing by myself. So what I did is start taking, what's that? Love every single one of them. And Eliana's asking even me. No, she probably doesn't because you're a psycho. Anyway, just trying to try to always, I'm gonna try to start going along with these comments as we go, even if it just breaks up my flow. I don't care. My brain's all over the place anyway. My brain's calibrated a little different from the planet where I'm from. So that's how I got in the best shape of my life. Is that all I did, all I changed in my routine. So I'm freaking I don't even know how old I am, like 50 or something. I got in the best shape of my life. Only thing I did different than I've normally done in the past to get in like the ridiculous, you know, conditioning and, and shape that I needed to get into to not disrespect the, the photographer's camera out in California was take more of my classes. That's what I did. I just took more classes here. More boxing classes, more boot camp classes. Simple as that. And that's how I got in the best shape of my life. And that's after already, you know, doing all this stuff on my own. That's what took it to the next level. So our trainers take these, ses these sessions on themselves. They, they take them. They, volunteer. they love to take them. You don't have to tell them to take them. Of course they're going to take them. That's how they're going to get in the best shape. But it's, it's going to be, you know, 10 times. They're going to get 10 times the benefit out of it. You know, that's one of the big, that's one of the biggest tools that sharpens the trainer skills is taking each other's classes. There's so many different variables, so many different things that happen when they take each other's classes and they're, you know, in the trench with the people. It's said, I think, by Rand, uh, Randy Couture. He said, the only thing that sharpens iron is iron. So our trainers feed off each other's energy. They feed off each other's strengths, which are many. They each have, you know, they're loaded with strengths. So they're feeding off each other, learning from each other. They're constantly learning from each other. They're helping each other out, bouncing ideas off each other, suggestions with each other. You know, after experiencing each other's classes and sessions from, like I said, the other side of the glass is what a lot of the trainers out there with those dick dudes need to be doing, like I was saying earlier. You know, it also gives them a chance to spill sweat in the sand, in the trenches with the same people that they might have recently just fucking tortured the day before. They're going to torture the next day coming up in their classes when they're training. So it's going to build that camaraderie and, you know, continue building on the culture. They're there with them. There's, there's something poetic watching them suffer side by side, the recruits with the sergeants. And even sometimes with the generals, side by side, just suffering, getting tortured, sweat pouring out of their head like they just got their head fucking split open with an axe and there's sweat poured out instead of blood. That's what it looks like half the time in here. So if you notice, I've been taking more and more sessions and that's because of the photo shoot I had coming up. And I have another professional photo shoot coming up in Las Vegas in May, so that's eight weeks from now. So now I need to be, from where I was, I need to go and get in even better shape than that. So my goal is that the pictures I just took recently in California is to make that guy in those pictures look like he has a fucking dick do compared to the product I'm going to put in front of the camera in Las Vegas in a week from now. So it's time to step on my own game. And how am I going to step my own game? By just taking more of our classes. That's it. And I told you all the different benefits of what it's going to do. It just builds so much more onto our culture is doing that. So let's see. Uh, you know, when I, when I get the chance to take those classes, I, I, the pain is, it's, they're hard. They're hard for me even. So, cause I'm pushing, I'm going to push myself to the limit. So you guys need to, when you come to those classes, don't just go through the motions. Don't just go through the exercise and do enough just to survive every set. Just like we, the trainers do it. It's also for the members bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. Even when you're training, when you're working out, if it's a 37, 30 second set, you need to do that 30 seconds. Like it's the last set of your fucking life. Like when you're done, you know, you're going to continue. You don't even know how you're going to continue, but you know what? The next set you're going to adapt you're going to overcome and you're going to figure it out. It's an invaluable and fucking immeasurable training tool providing like great dividends and, and increased client results and experience and culture by all, all of our trainers, you know, and all of our, the torturers that we do in here and getting tortured with you guys. So we need to walk the fucking walk and just not be a little bitches as trainers, you know, not just go and go work out when there's no one around and do some little weightlifting and some little pec flies or some shit, you know, we're, we, we, we torture you guys. We expect you to do it. We're going to walk the fucking walk with you. Every one of us. We love it. And we volunteer to do it. We just show up to do it. We don't have to do it. No one has to take our classes. None of the trainers have to, but you know what? They do because they know the benefit they're going to get out of it. So speaking to people who are, are talking the talk, walking the walk, we're going to go into the case study for this week. And that case study, I don't know if I posted is Margot Abraham. Awesome peak freak. She is a freak show. So she told me recently, she made a lot of stuff about herself. She told me in 2016, she made a, the conscious decision. It was October, I think, when we had like a 21 day promotion. It was a 21 day promotion. She said she, she thought it was you know, only gonna be for the 21 days. She's gonna try it out. She's not gonna survive. She's not gonna last. But you know, she took, took the 21 day session. Margot, she's there, she's watching. There's another freak there. Look at that. They're all watching in there. 
So Margo, I'm about to go tell your whole life story. Hope you don't mind. I don't even know if you gave me permission to, but I'm doing it anyway. Is it 21 day? Well, I already said 21 days, so 21 day, 20 day, what difference does it make? Anyway, so she thought she, you know, she said her, mo her mother died from cancer at age 48 and she was herself about to turn 50. She said that this, that she's always just been heavy from being a child, and, but in high school she was still very, very physically active in track and field and cheerleading. But once she got to college, it all changed. Years, la years later, she had her first kid who now is 21. I don't know how she has a 21 year old because it's always like a kid herself. Would you have a kid when you were like 13 or something? Because you're like a young kid yourself. And you look, and you're getting younger and younger. Every month go on, you get younger and younger instead of older and older. That's what happens when you're a peep freak and you're doing it. Look at that. Go for it. I'm already, I already started telling your story, so you gave permission a little too late. But so the doctors told her that she, if she would lose weight, she could get off her blood pressure medication, you know, and that would be a thing of the past. Besides the pain she was having in her knees and, and back or whatever else, you know, once having three children, her weight would, would go up and down and fluctuate and, you know, gain weight. And in October of 2016, which is when she first came here, she was at her heaviest, you know, in a long time, heaviest ever probably. So she's been in the past, she's been a member of Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, joined tons of gyms, tons of training programs, even was part of a group of women who would meet every morning in the gym at 5.30 a.m. And, and but it just dissolved, it just fizzled out because you, you don't have the right direction, the right coaching, the right leadership, you know, the right knowledge and the right experience, the right culture, it's just not gonna last, it's not gonna survive. So just a bunch of people getting together that don't really necessarily know what they're doing just because they're there at 5.30 in the morning, you know, they need that motivation, they need the knowledge and the experience. So, so one day, one, uh, you know, the one, day that at, she was at home, she felt hopeless, like there was nothing out there, she could ever save her. She came across, you know, and made them leave of faith, and I thought it was a 20-day program, she said 28, so I'll go with her and say she joined one of our, one of our promotions, one of our programs, and her and her sister and her cousin came, and the process began. So, since she's been at Peak Physique, that was, you know, and now, as of March, uh, she told me this a like, couple weeks ago, so as of March 15th, that was like barely six months, she was down 56 pounds, she's gone down two dress sizes, or two pant sizes, and that was, like I said, six months. She began, she walked in here at 309 pounds. And now she's, this was a couple weeks ago that she told me this. She was down to 253. So I'm sure she's under 250 right now. Margo, what's your weight at now? You're watching. What's your weight now? 249. Look at that. Now she's under 250. I knew it. I knew she, if she was a week and a half ago at 253, for sure she had to be lower than that. So now she's at 249. So this, she was at 56 minus another four. So she just hit 60 pounds down in like barely six months. 10 pounds a month. Can't beat that. That's two and a half pounds a week. That's quick math. I didn't have to pull out my abacus. So shit, holy fucking shit, that's, that's awesome. 60 pounds, holy shit. She didn't say oh, holy fucking shit, I said that. So I don't think she walks around cursing like an asshole like me because I was kind of telling you what she's saying and I said holy fucking shit. She does talk a lot of shit, but I don't think she talks like that. Margo, do you talk like that? Would you say holy fucking shit? She's in there. Anyway, those are my words, not hers, but first part is hers about all those numbers and all that. So we're just fucking proud of her, what she's accomplished here, you know, and Anyway, she's now wearing pants that she hasn't been able to put on in years, you know, very, very long time. And she's here five to six days a week at 5 a.m. <laughs> she said, yes, I do. Okay, so Margo did say holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit, Margo. There. Now you don't have to be offended. No way, not her. Oh, she said it right there. Holy ducking shit. You misspelled fucking. You put ducking on accident. I think you, you forgot the F. There you go. Fucking shit. Hell yeah. That's what people freaks. You could come in here, you could curse, you could scream, you could freaking piss, you could puke, whatever. Just clean that shit up. Anyway, she comes five, six days a week. She's here at 5 a.m. Now, I talk about dedication. She is every day at 5 in the morning. That means you have to wake up at 4 in the morning because you need to get some food in you. You need to eat a little bit. You know, she's taking one boot camp, boot camp or boxing class a day. Sometimes she's even doubling up. Doubling up is just taking one boot camp and a boxing class. Usually, it's going to be back to back. So... Since she's become a member here of the Peak Freak family, she finds that posting her progress, she's got a lot of support from her family and friends. No one's ever been trying to, her fan, fan, family's been supporting her. That's going to be a huge thing. So you got to get people on board with your mission and your purpose who are going to support you. And anyone that's not, cut those motherfuckers off. So her family, no one in her family's ever tried to tell her, stop doing what you're doing. You know, you're fine the way you are. They're supportive of her because they're going to, you know, you need people around you that's going to tell you the truth and not going to bullshit you and people that are not going to try and drag you down in their miserable lives. So... She's now being approached by people and friends out there to asking her to contribute to their blogs and telling her she's an inspiration and motivates people. And she's like, you know, fuck yeah. Well, I'm like, fuck yeah, but she now she, she's, she approves of that. Like, fuck yeah, she's an inspiration. Hell yeah, she, she's an inspiration to us. She's an inspiration to her trainers. She's motivating her trainers, seeing her, what she couldn't do. When she first came in, she was doing a squat. 
maybe only with her knees and her back and, and the additional weight she had, she had to modify her squat. She literally was move, moving down like a couple inches for a squat, like literally a partial squat. A couple months later, like maybe like a month, a month and a half ago, we're doing a 180 squat jump. She is squatting down a full squat, jumping 180 and landing and jumping back and forth right here. A 180 squat jump when just a couple of months ago, she could barely even bend her knees like two degrees. So that's some awesome shit. Now that's why she, she's motivating the, uh, the people in the class, she's motivating the trainers, and that's why she's motivating her friends and, her, and people out there in her life. And she's friends in, in New York City and in the area in Connecticut that want to even, you know, come here and visit just to try and, you know, get a little peak freak experience themselves. She's, she's already sent in tons of people in here. We appreciate that. She's sending tons of referrals into us already, you know, so she's spreading the word. So she said her favorite one thing about the gym is she said it's impossible to say one favorite thing. She said she has six favorite things. I don't know how she has six. She said her fav six favorite things in the gym are Eva and Eliana and Chris and Jasmine and Joe. And I think she accidentally put it in when she put in Steve. And mm -hmm. then she said, yes, Steve, you're part of my favorite crew. She was more up ahead than I thought to add me into there. So she said, I said your hips and not your head. So that was an inside joke. She said, where is she? She's posting on there. Something. I don't know what she's saying. Anyway, that's an inside joke, I guess, in one of our workouts we had. She says she's now happier and much healthier than she's been. She gets a kick out of seeing the difference in her whole body. She, she was just saying to her sister that her, even her, her fucking hands are getting thinner. That's, the, that's we're, we are going to start marketing that. We will make your fucking hands thinner. You want thinner hands? Come to fucking peak physique. We'll make your hands thinner. And the rest of your body's going to go along with that, most likely. I don't know how just your hands would get thinner, but that's, if your hands are getting thinner, I'm guessing the rest of your body's losing weight, right, Margo? There she says, your hips, not your head. That's right. She was my coach. She was my co-trainer for one of the classes one day. She was helping me out when they were getting, when the recruits were getting out of control. She had to put their asses in line, pulling out the, the belts and shit, whipping their asses. So she said she now has an attitude of just winning all day and every day. And she can't stop and she won't stop. And she has more confidence in what she's wearing. And she feels lighter on her feet. And she loves to dance. She can go out dancing now and nothing can stop her from moving. And she has no excuses. So I'm going to post some pictures of hers. Margo, you're in there. You can post some pictures right now in the comments too. I'll find, I'll, you probably have some more recent ones. So what an amazing fucking story that was, right? So that story is so freaking inspiring that we're going to, with the program she was working for, she said she was on a 28 day program. I thought it was 21, but whatever. I'm going to make, to make it happen just for today, I'm going to reactivate one of the links we had for that 21 days for $21, the rapid fat loss kickstart program, just for new members to try it out. So they could be just, you want to be on the same program that Margo started like six months ago. She lost over 60 pounds in six months. So I'm going to put a link in the comments there where you can try out that 21 day for $21. I'm going to do it just for the first 21 people because we can't have a bunch of freaks in here on that. So just the first 21 people that are going to sign up for that, you could do that. And you could be on the program that she's on for, you know, that, that, that's our most successful weight loss kickstart program we have. So next, let's go over some of the, the awards we've given out recently. Last week, we had our Armando who got a bronze medal for be breaking past 25 pounds loss. He's already at like 30 pounds. We had Karen who went, lost, is up to 32 pounds, so she got a bronze medal. Tertsi, 33 pounds, she got a bronze medal. Matt, 30 pounds, he got a bronze medal. Then Matt also got a bronze medal for six, he's been here for, you know, six months. He survived without dying, so it is possible. And then Maureen, who got a, a silver medal, she's now been here with us for a year. She has like a collection of, I have to keep ordering more medals because Maureen steals all my fucking medals. She must have like, 37 fucking medals at home. She wins she got a medal for like everything. She blinks her eyes and she gets a medal somehow. She has a whole collection of medals. Everything she does. No, she's lost over a hundred and I don't even know what it is now. A hundred and something pounds now in, in, in a year. She lost over a hundred pounds in like nine months. So now I'm sure it's higher than that. So she keeps racking up the medals. She has a whole collection. So don't forget. So next Tuesday is the peak, the, the physical fitness test that we're doing. I'll go over the details. I'm not going to go over them now, but just real quick. It's a, it's a minute of each. I'll post the stuff if you guys want to even try it. Even if you're not a member here, you can do it yourselves and post your progress on it. Every first Tuesday every month, we do the physical fitness test. It's put a minute of push-ups, squat thrusts, crawl outs, and plank walks. A minute of each with a two minute, exactly a two minute break in between. You keep track of your numbers and you month to month, see how you did it. So the first Tuesday every month, that's going to be next Tuesday. So make sure you're going to do that. You're going to show up here for that and get that done. So stay consistent with the different modifications and variables you use. So like, for instance, if you're doing a, a push-up and you're only going halfway down in your push-up each time, the next time you do your push-ups sure, and you're going halfway down, make sure you're consistent with the way you modified it. If you're going to modify it a different way, that's going to give you a whole different number. So make sure you're keeping staying consistent with it so your numbers and your progress is going to be consistent. consistent. So even if you guys out there that aren't members, you want to do these at home, you could record them. Actually, maybe I'm actually going to do a, a live video, a live follow-along video of the fitness test. I'll kind of walk you through it, the exact time you need to do so you guys can follow along. We could record it, 
and we'll post it so you guys can do the fitness test at home. Send me your results. Love to see your results, see how you guys are doing. So next week then is the first Tuesday of the month. We're gonna obviously do that for every session to get kickstart here of each workout on Tuesday. See where you are compared to your numbers from last week. You know, but I'll do, we're gonna do a live video next Tuesday. We'll put that as part of the live that we're gonna do later. What, you wanna be on camera? Is that what you said? You wanna come talk? They'd love to hear from you. No? All right. How about you? Oh yeah, from the bathroom, right? You were the one yelling from the toilet bowl. That wasn't last week, that was like three, that was like three weeks ago. So we are two things set for the next week. That's the, you're gonna go over what are you struggling with in your fitness or in your life or whatever. And then we're also gonna do, run you through our physical fitness test that we do each, the first Tuesday of each month. I'm gonna actually run you through it, exactly how we do it, coach you through it, so you guys can even do it at home or wherever you are, around the country, around the world, whatever. And that's what we're gonna do. So if there's any questions here, we'll go over some questions. If not, we gotta get a class started here soon. Margaret said her hands were always full and now they're smaller. So she's on the hand thinning program. So if you want small hands, follow her program, sign up for those 21 days and you can have small hands just like Margot. Skinny hands. Anyway, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. We gotta get set up for a class. So you can put any questions in the comments below. I'll put the link for that 21 days in there. So the first 21 people that can sign up for that and then it's gonna be cut off. So if you want it, you gotta do that right away. I'll put that post there in a couple minutes. And that's it, see you next time.